So I bought this monitor back in October and after I owned it for about a month, I made an unboxing slash initial review video. And now I wanna do an update on the monitor and how I like it for work as a developer and for just using it on a regular basis and not using it so much for gaming. And I think that's where I went wrong with this purchase and I'm just gonna open up by saying that. I bought this monitor a lot because of how it looked and how I thought it would look in my office and how cool it was. And it's kind of silly because I'm a grown man who has to admit this to himself now. Truth is, is that I don't have a graphics card that can push this to its full potential. And I also don't game enough to really justify owning this monitor. I use it for work as a software developer, so I code on this thing for about eight to nine hours a day. And mostly the only other thing that I use it for is for editing YouTube videos or creating thumbnails and kind of doing, I guess, what would be design work and editing work because I use it for my YouTube channel. Looking back now, I realized that I probably paid for a monitor that looked cool because I don't use it for what it's meant for and that's gaming when i first got it it made cracking noise that had me very concerned but my office was in a different location in the house and it was actually in the section of the house that i fixed up for it to be my office and the insulation wasn't that good in there and it would get very cold and i remember reading that the popping plastic was because of it being cold and this monitor gets so hot and i really think that's what was happening because once i moved it in to the spare bedroom that I'm using now as my office after I had the leak in that room, I realize now that it hardly ever cracks, if at all. And that really had me nervous when I was hearing all that crackling and the popping in this monitor when I first got it, but that completely went away and it really doesn't happen anymore. And so far I haven't had any single light leaks from the bezel. I know that that was like a big deal with these monitors when they first came out. I have noticed a little bit of backlight bleed, which isn't a huge deal, but it is noticeable whenever it's a black screen and there are some images around it, you will get some light bleeding from the edges of whatever's being displayed on the screen if everything else is black. And it doesn't bug me a bunch, but I kind of feel like this monitor is supposed to be the top of the line monitor from Samsung and you know it's meant for gaming. And I would think that some of the backlight issues that you do see on this monitor shouldn't be there for a gaming monitor. But again, I'm using it mostly for work and it doesn't bug me that much but it is noticeable, so I thought I'd mention it. Uh, other than that, I think the curvature is too much for a work computer. I almost wish that I didn't have this 1000R curve. I feel that I kind of have to turn my head more, and had this been a little bit flatter, it, the peripherals wouldn't be so far off to the side, and I would maybe be able to see more of the screen. I don't know because I don't really have any other ultra wide to compare it to, but it kind of feels that way sometimes. It feels like I'm in a fishbowl. And when I have to have like a text editor on one side and a browser window on the other side, or I have different things on different parts of my screen and I have to like look from one side to the other, it really feels like I'm turning my head often. And again, I don't know if this is normal for ultra wides, but I have a feeling it has to do with the curvature. Um, but it's still an awesome monitor. It still looks great and I still really, really like it. And the infinity core lighting that I thought was really cool in all the pictures that I saw. But the truth is I never see that side of the monitor. And it's really silly to say it, but that actually had some influence on me like making this purchase. I liked how it looked and I really, really kind of got caught up on that a little bit too much. And maybe I was trying to just build the ultimate office and I wanted to really have a really, really nice looking office. And I thought this monitor looked better. But at that point, for what I use it for, I bought it more as a piece of like decorative, nice looking furniture than for functionality. One more thing that I noticed about this monitor was that when I first got it, I've set my keyboard and my mouse on the desk. And I mentioned this in the first video, I felt like I needed to be further away from it because it was just too, too close to me. And if I wanted it further away, I either had to put it on a mounting arm for my desk so I can kind of move it back and forth or get a keyboard tray for 60 bucks versus a very expensive monitor arm that was $300 or it was like 350 bucks because I had to get the special bracket because this monitor is so heavy that the other monitor arms out there can't really support this and you need to buy like this super expensive monitor arm. So it's it feels like a very 
specialty item where <laughs> I can't just go and get a regular old monitor arm for it because it's so damn heavy. So yeah, there's a few regrets because if I would have saved that money, I probably could have gotten a monitor arm on a cheaper 49 inch ultra wide and then I would have had more space on my desk and I wouldn't have needed this keyboard tray. But all in all, I made it work. It's not that bad and it's a really nice monitor. It, it really, really is a really, really nice monitor. And in that previous video, I mentioned that this was the business model. And from what I understand that that was just a naming thing and really there's not much of a difference from this one and the previous one. And that's why when I bought it and I did all that research trying to figure out if this was a different monitor than the original batch of G9s because it had the business model label on it, I, I don't think that meant anything. This is just an Odyssey G9. I remember searching it and Googling it and a lot of people couldn't tell what the difference was and people even weighed it on scales and everything. I mentioned that in the first video too, to see because the only difference that, that was on the labeling and the packaging was that it was a few pounds lighter, but somebody weighed it on Reddit and it, that wasn't the case. And I mentioned that in the first video. And that's really all I wanted to say. If you're looking into purchasing this monitor and you can justify it because you game often enough and you have a graphics card that can really get all of the performance out of this monitor, then go for it. But if you're just gonna plug this into a MacBook Pro or just a regular old laptop and not have a graphics card that you can get the most out of this monitor and you're not gonna game on it, then you're really paying for, for how, how pretty it looks. And that's kind of what I did. And I have a little bit of buyer's remorse, I'm not gonna lie. I look back now and I'm like, man, I could have saved a few hundred bucks had I gotten the cheaper monitor because I got the more expensive monitor, which then made me get the protection plan because I was paranoid because the Odyssey G9s had so many issues that I didn't want to have any problems with it. So I got the Best Buy warranty on it. That was an additional 200 bucks. And all in all, when it was all said and done, I'm kind of regretting not having the extra money that I spent on it to have purchased something else from my office. All right, that's pretty much it. I wanna wrap up this video. I feel like I've said enough bad things about this monitor. It really is an awesome monitor. Just, just make sure you're purchasing it for all the right reasons. And if you're just using it for regular old office work or editing and designing, uh, don't, don't, don't waste your money and just settle for a cheaper monitor. But if you're going to use it for gaming and you're really going to push it to its limits and get everything that you can get out of this monitor, then I think then that's, that's the right call to make. So it's just up to you. This is definitely a monitor for a hardcore gamer and not just a monitor for office work and whatnot. All right, with all that said, I'm gonna wrap this video up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. It'll help me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm and thanks for watching.